Hi guys, today we're going to be taking you through our top 7 tips on the dreaded double unders. So we've got different ways to implement how to improve your double under and how to make them more efficient during wads. Check them out. Okay guys, top tip number one is making sure you find the right length for you on your rope. Now this may seem very basic, but when you first start learning double unders, it's extremely important to make sure your rope length is accurate for you. Now, when you measure your rope, you put either one foot or two feet inside, but you make sure you use the same every time to just remember whether you're using one or two. I like to use two to make it symmetrical through your body as well. So two feet inside the rope and you bring it up to your body so you can see where the handles are and how you measure that. Now when you first start learning double unders, it makes it a little bit easier if you allow the rope to be a little bit longer, so you bring the handles here would be level with my chest. And then over time, you make it smaller and smaller, very, very small each time, and just make sure you measure this every time you do it, feet back in, and you only change it a tiny bit every time you bring it down, okay? So top tip number one is finding the right length of your rope and starting with the handles level with the chest. Okay guys, top tip number two is keeping your core tight. Now when you're skipping, if you use a hollow and squeeze your core nice and solid, this is going to help keep your body all locked in one place. If your core's loose and there's movement in the hips, this is going to feed through your body into your arms. This will affect your hand positioning, even your feet. So therefore, if we change the different parts of the body, this is going to make your, the dome that you're trying to create a nice solid steel dome. If your core's loose, this works from the inside out. Everything else is going to move. The more movement you have, the more chance there is going to be of standing on the rope and not getting efficient double unders um, consecutively in a row. So, top tip number two is squeezing your abs, brace the core, and keep that nice and tight. Okay guys, top tip number three is your hand positioning. Now, as you just heard on the previous tip, it's extremely important we're trying to create this perfect dome in your rope. So by doing this, we keep our hands slightly in front of the body to keep control when using our wrists, and you keep them slightly outside. If your hands start moving up, down, left or right during this movement, this is going to affect the shape of your dome. So if my hands go out, the dome comes smaller. If they're coming up, the dome's going to move up. And therefore, there's more room for error, or you have more chance to stand on the rope and not get consecutive double unders. So top tip number three is your hand positioning. Okay guys, top tip number four is going to be using a floating jump. Now when we're doing double unders, it's extremely important to give yourself a little bit of air time, but making sure you're staying relaxed at the same time. If we're speeding our rope up, what we don't want to be doing is speeding our jump up as well, so we're giving yourself less air time. So if we keep our core nice and tight and our chest raised and we do a nice big floating jump, you can see that that's nice and relaxed and still able to talk, you're not getting out of breath and you're not rushing the movement. So if we bring our feet up too early, we try and rush this, your body's going to be moving down as the feet are coming up, therefore less air time, more chance for error, and standing on that rope. So top tip number four is a nice big floating jump. Okay guys, top tip number five is going to be the focus on your hands. Now when you're doing a double under, what we're looking for is a double whip of the rope. This all comes from your wrist. Now, we all already know the positioning of our hands just in front of the body outside. If we rotate our hands outwards and we use our arms for the rotation, this is going to be really inefficient. This is going to burn your shoulders out fast. So we bring them hands back to where we want them just in front outside. Arms looking pretty straight compared to an outside movement. And you're going to be looking for the wrists to do all the work. Okay, so as you're coming up and down, you're flicking the rope, and this comes from the wrist movement up and down, not an, rot an external rotation using the shoulder for the movement. Okay, so this is going to be top tip number five, is the focus on the wrists. Okay guys, top tip number six is going to be staying as static as possible. So a good drill to practice this is giving yourself either one mat to start with, a bit of room for error, bring, that circle, bring it in smaller by giving yourself a little circle to practice in. The reason we do this is the more movement you have, if your feet are going left, right and you're jumping around, 
What's going to happen to the dome that we've already talked about? That's going to move, that's going to give you more error, more chance of standing on that rope, and then make it a lot less efficient as well. So you're looking to stay as static as you can in your, in your movements, and just think about the toes doing the work and the body nice and straight, and keeping everything as still as possible. If our hands are staying in one position, our body's staying braced, and our feet are in one position, that takes away a lot of, of chances and room for error of standing on the rope. So top tip number six, stay as static as possible. Okay guys, top tip number seven is gonna be focusing on one spot. Now, when I'm doing a double under, if I look at one area, this is gonna help lead back to top tip number six of keeping everything static and still. That leads back to number five, four, three, and so on, and helps you implement all your different movements. Now, if, if you look around the room as you're doing your double unders and you keep changing your eyesight, this is gonna move from the head into the body, into your legs, into your hands, and so on. So we've got more room for movement, uh, so more movement, more room for error. This is gonna become inefficient. So focus on one little area, brace, keep everything nice and tight, and that'll help as well when you're doing that. Think about all the other tips that we're doing, um, and that'll help you then keep nice, efficient, and smooth double unders throughout the movement. So these are our top seven tips for double unders. So I hope these are helpful. If you have any questions on any of the tips or anything else that you have with the double under, don't hesitate to get in contact with any of our coaches at the box.